going to be collecting both of Pokemon Uranium's fossil Pokemon into a single playthrough using the power of string theory. I may have destroyed a computer or two in the past month, but the multiverse travel I do while recording this video has miraculously saved my entire playthrough. More on all of the fun it's been rebuilding all of my configuration files later. Since we have received HM Strength after defending Legend Town, by giving Doug, champion to all chipmunks, HM Strength, we now have access to a portion of Comet Cave which was previously obstructed. I actually wandered over here by chance, but realizing what I had stumbled onto, figured this might be helpful. Leaving Rockvale Town and heading east along Route 5, continuing east at the fork in the road, on the shoreline there's a cave opening slightly north. From the mouth of the cave it's a straight shot south until you reach the boulders, and the typical fossil maniac demanding one of the two fossils is there. I'm going to catch this Dunsparce so I have additional trading fodder for the GTS system. This method does call for you losing occasional Pokémon in alternate timelines. Took me a moment to realize that, at least while a controller is plugged in, the on-screen keyboard is the only way to name your Pokémon now. Not sure why a patch would remove a feature, but, uh, interesting choice by the devs. Doug up to level 16. And here is the uppity trainer trope. Well, this fossil maniac doesn't immediately force you into a battle. The Razor Fang, if you ever want to evolve your Glygar into a Glyscor. In the event that you weren't somehow already aware, archaeologists are a rowdy crowd. Always picking fights with passers-by about the fossils. True wild cards, all of them. After defeating the trainer in a battle, you'll be able to take one of these fossils for yourself, so get to it. I find it interesting that for an optional fight, you can't just reject the challenge here. Is this not meant to be an RPG game? What if my character isn't interested in the fossil? To be fair, I am interested in the fossil, but the game doesn't know that yet. You do need to already have strength to reach this trainer, but she definitely has stronger Pokémon than anything else in the cave. I mean, the Dunsparce we caught in here was only level like 16, just don't let yourself get caught off guard. Even with Jonathan and Ted being somewhat overleveled, they have type weaknesses that overlap with each other in such a way that even a team like this is a threat to them. Doug shares in that ground type weakness, and many ground types will have a rock type move for coverage against flying types. However, I am curious to see what the higher tiers of pickup will offer us if we keep Doug around. The rare candies from the babies are already great. Doug, up to level 17. The item drop table for the pickup ability is based on every 10 levels as a bracket. 1 to 10, 11 to 20, and so on. We are given the choice between the hare and the tusk fossil, resulting in a sloth or a mammoth, respectively. This trainer is kind enough to provide us with a reminder of where the fossil revivication lab is. I'm not a huge fan of this hint because the Pokemon lab north of Rockvale is where the Pokemon translator was obtained. It would be a different story if the expert was located somewhere that we might not have been at this point in the story. It only seems fair to provide a little bit of attention to these trainers that we dodged on the way in. and we get Doug up to level 18, which is when he could learn Quick Attack if you want a priority move on him. I decided to give up Growl rather than Charge. Charge boosts defense, plus gives you extra electric damage, whereas Growl just reduces incoming physical damage. Does Uranium let you do the Fear Play, the uh, Focus Sash, Endeavor, Quick Attack, usually a Rattata, but in this case a Chin Monk? We're gonna head back to town to heal, free up a space in our party, and then go visit the Fossil Expert. Reach into your General Items pouch and hand the Necromancer your Fossil of Choice. Anyone else wonder why these fossil guys never do any work on ghost-type Pokémon? 
But what if you actually did have a necromancer instead of a scientist doing this in one of the fan games? It might be a little nostalgic, but I'm not a huge fan of this on-screen keyboard only thing. I miss being able to type in names. We're just gonna name the guy Sother. It's electric. It is a lightning-fast sloth. Now that we have our first of our fossils, we need to do some time traveling and multiverse hopping. So we're going to make a backup of where we are currently saved, rewind to before we got this fossil, run through and get the other fossil, and then upload these guys onto the GTS so that I can get everything onto a singular profile. Could I have started by uploading to the GTS this sloth? Sure, but uh, let's wait till we have the mammoth also. By rewinding to just before we fought the Ace Trainer, we can rebattle them on this different timeline, with the work that we've already done backed up at a separate location. We're going to speed our clips through this, as it's largely the same. The next video chapter will pick up where we actually begin working with the GTS. This time we will be claiming the Tusk Fossil rather than the Hair Fossil. And once we've revitalized our little woolly mammoth, then I'll save, make a backup of this timeline, and begin the GTS proceedings to transfer both fossils to the one true timeline. It is similar to how I transferred the starters in, however, there is an additional hurdle to overcome. Got ourselves a snowpock. He shall be named Mouth. The woolly mammoth, like the giant sloth, are extinct and thus fossils. That's right, did you know there used to be ten-foot-tall sloths? Its ability boosts evasiveness in a hailstorm. I guess it's like having a free double team during your chip damage. Saving timeline B so that we have a backup before we start GTS stuff. Having made a backup of timeline B, we are loading back into timeline A. We are going to put up some sort of fodder Pokemon in the GTS system, requesting a snowpock in return. 29, 22, 38. I had yet to discover just how important my online ID was. For now, we'll just search with these conditions. And we can hit Summary here to see that our Cub Bug Bruce is on offer. And in theory, we're set to save, make a backup, and hop over to Timeline B. Surely there will be no hiccups in this process. Nothing bad has ever come from trying to exploit a Pokemon game. Loading directly into Timeline B, I go to check the GTS and realize that I can't find my offer. So as a real quick sanity check, I decide to search for my cub bug Bruce rather than simply offering up the snowpock and seeing what's available. And that doesn't turn up anything either, and I'm beginning to realize that the game does not let you trade directly with a clone of yourself. From this point I've realized that I need to trade between a separate profile with a different ID, so I decide to hop onto War Tour to see if that's doable. Turns out that getting all of the starters for myself on a single profile made it easier to get both of the fossils. So I start using Warter as a middleman. I end up hopping back over to the current universe's main profile to pass over whatever fossil Pokemon is in the buffer. And when I go to check the summary, I see an error has occurred. I believe that this is a result of the same profile trying to offer up two different Pokemon simultaneously or rather that the alternate timeline of this profile is already offering something else up and the game doesn't know why this version of the profile isn't. However, if I search specifically for Newton, the Outen that Wartor has offered up and is seeking the Snowpock, which this profile has, then I could send the Snowpock over to Wartor. So now Universe B has sent their fossil Pokemon out in exchange for Newton, the Outen. And if I hop on back over to Wartor, I could receive Mouth, the Snowpock. So now Newton, which has already been received in Universe B, officially transfers over away from Wartor, and we receive our Woolly Mammoth. Now, in theory, because Universe A already offered up a Cub Bug, 
in exchange for a snowpock, I should be able to continue from Wartor and offer up my snowpock and now find the initial offer for the cub bug. And there is my cub bug named Bruce. So we should be able to complete this trade and then step back into Universe A and receive the Woolly Mammoth. From Universe A, checking the summary shouldn't throw us an error because Universe B isn't the one with an outstanding offer, it was Universe A all along. And as we restore our backup of Universe A and enter into the GTS, we will find that we are able to complete our final trade offers. Make sure to save at this point because it's a headache to get here and you won't want to have to do it again. And as you can see, I now have both of my fossil Pokémon on one profile. And with a little bit of save state juggling, you can do the same. And while you might think that this is the end of the story, we actually have to talk about Universe C. Due to a critical system failure, I had to rebuild the entirety of my operating system. I lost many files, including the original game save files that I have here. However, thankfully, because of the time traveling that I'm doing, I had backups not located within the normal game's directory. These backups were saved with my actual footage for the project. And because of that, from the backups, I am able to recreate the final transactions, thus generating this new Universe C. Thanks for sticking around while I rebuild. Trying to build the infrastructure out for a more normalized upload schedule. Got a new mic, did you notice?